Well, welcome back to Air Crash Investigator. And today I'm going to have a look at a Robinson 44 helicopter that actually impacted with the water on the Valdam not so long time ago. Starting off here with the actual helicopter, uh, there she is. Um, the Valdam, this is just a part of the wall, and for those that don't know, the Valdam is a very vast, vast stretch of water, uh, giving mainly water to the Johannesburg area in South Africa. And um, they were coming around here, and here on the, the edge they would have landed, and we'll see it on the next sortie. And the pilot had a passenger in front. There were two dogs in the back. Um, I've got no problem with that. I'm, I'm not getting into uh, any possibility of distractions because I, 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 that's not where I would like to go. But let's just see the path that he followed. You can see it's from here. He nicely went over here, descending turn, intercepting the final approach, kept on descending here, and unfortunately, here, the water. Now, just a comment on this one, and I know a lot of people won't agree, but if you zoom out on Google, uh, to me, this is the best approach there was. Now, a lot of people can say, yeah, but you're flying over water, and that's dangerous. Yes, it is only dangerous if you fly over water if you don't write, use the right technique. If you think for yourself that every time that you fly over water you've got an engine cut, uh, I suggest you buy yourself a different helicopter or something else. All right. Um, they inserted the helicopter crash here at point four, and there was no survivors. If we look at the environmental factors, it played a major role. And here I want you to see how calm the weather was. This is the actual day, and if you look at there and you look at here, especially here, if you can tell exactly where the ground ends and the water starts, that is what we call the mirror effect. Now, the mirror effect, remember, whatever you see below the mirror is as high as everything that is above the mirror. So, if there's star, stars in the sky above the mirror, then they as deep as that underneath. The problem is where does these two get together? You don't exactly know. And depth perception is, this is not the first accident. And these accidents will continue to happen because flying low over water, especially if there's no ripples, in other words, three-dimensionality goes for a loop, then this will be the result. Yeah, I said that was very smooth, and the evening lights, landing light, his landing light, was on. Now, the, the causation possibilities, there, there is a few, and here I'm using the same picture of the helicopter on final. There's his light in the ground, and this is where the mirror effect now starts. So, remember, when he got closer here, that was a bit of a problem. So, the pilot was focused. But where was he focused? If I come in and I turn around there and I want to see where I want to go, and I, remember, I've been here hundreds of times before. It's not the first time that I'm going to land in this place. I've done this um, umpteenth times. So the area can, on, I'm looking at the landing spot, and I'm now using my peripheral vision. Unfortunately, now, the peripheral vision was the problem. The water would have acted like a mirror, and that obviously give you a problem with the depth perception. Uh, here, I, I just want to see, say that the pilot never saw the ground. When you look at the, the video and the, the slower part of it, the pilot never, there was never a movement, there was never an indication that he was trying to um, stop the rate of descent or pull the nose up because he's going to crash with the, uh, with the water. So, as far as I'm concerned, this was an, an at most surprise. Uh, he didn't see the water. His passenger didn't see the water. They were probably looking on the on the uh, shore for the family standing there. Very sad. All right. And then due to the the light sources, I say here, and and this is something I just want to mention. I talk here about the black hole. Now, very quickly on the black hole. If you in the dark at night, if you play 
fly from A to B and you're flying to a, a dense light source, the light source will always at night appear to be closer to you than what it actually is. For a pilot on approach, what that will mean is that he will get the idea that he's actually sitting a little bit high in the glide path or the approach path than what he actually is. And now you can see. That's why black hole becomes very, very uh, dangerous in itself. Right, let's have a look at, um, at the video. See you now. Right here we can see the helicopter now descending. The rate of descent is not being decreased. In fact, it slightly increases here in the final turn. But you can see that the pilot was definitely not aware of the water. Alright, so that looks like a surprise. I just slowed it down to just make 100% sure that there was no reaction from the pilot. And as such, I can't observe anything like that. Very tragic. As customary, we have to take some lessons away. Now, the, the lessons I want to take away is not the, the lesson of don't approach over the water. We are going to approach over the water. There's many instances where we have to approach over water. We have to approach over um, pans. We have to approach over sand dunes. And there's so many stuff where the depth perception is a little bit of a problem. So we have to change the way that we approach. And that is what I'm going to talk about here. First of all, obviously, flying lower over water is, is not a good idea. All right. So, if you ever have the urge to fly low over water, don't. That's it. Don't. Because peripherally, especially if the water is um, very smooth, you're not going to be able to judge your height. And you need a radar or a radio altimeter uh, for that. Okay. Then I say here, change the flight profile. Let's change it to a constant path or a constant angle. Now, when you look at the drawing at the bottom here, if you look at this angle here, that is the constant angle. doesn't matter where you come from that I'm talking about. That's the constant path. In other words, it's like an ILS uh, that you're flying. So you're flying from one point, in this case, with X amount of speed, and you will end up with, let's say, 20 feet in the hover, zero forward speed at the bottom. So in order to set yourself up, first of all, in the Robinson 44, you reduce your speed to 60, you descend, and now you reduce the speed to 40 knots. And 40 knots and 200 feet. And you maintain that. Here you can see the light is on. Until the light shines on the LZ. And then you use your collective to go in there. Oh. But if you continue 40 knots, you're going to fly over the place. So remember, as you get into your angle, the speed will have to come back. So if you're over or undershoot, it is a speed or a cyclic issue. The collective is rate of descent. And remember, I say here that 300 feet a minute is maximum rate of descent. We can go into that. Believe me, that's what you want to do. And night, always come a little bit higher in the hover over the LZ, a little bit higher there over the, the LZ, as I've said there. And, um, yeah, uh, use the lights. The R44 has got a beautiful set of lights. It's set at the right angle, and it's at the right angle for approach of approach, uh, for this kind of approach that I've just explained. Right, okay, that's it for now. See you on the next one.